Thank you so much for coming out today. Um, um, we know you guys are fitting it into your schedule. We with the city of Owensboro and uh, Spectra are excited about our announcement. Uh, we've been in conversation um, with the NAPB for quite some time over the months once we found out that uh, the Mavericks were going to cease basketball operations. We had a few different folks that we've been talking to and there was a lot of interest with teams coming back to Owensboro and having professional basketball. So we're excited that you guys are here today uh, to be a part of the announcement that we've got. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Blake Henry, the general manager with Owensboro Convention Center and Sports Center to give you a little bit more background on that. Thank you, Tim. Thank you everyone for attending today's NAPB press conference. My name is Blake Henry, general manager of the Owensboro Sports Center and Convention Center. Uh, Spectrum Venue Management is proud to announce the addition of the North American Premier Basketball League to our event schedule here at the Sports Center beginning in January. Uh, the NAPB is considered a top basketball league, uh, only below the NBA and the NBA Developmental League. It is a brand new league and the president and COO is Mr. David Magley. Uh, Mr. Magley was the former commissioner of the NBL of Canada, uh, a former head coach and a former Cleveland Cavaliers player. He's also a member of the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. Uh, the NAPB has been formed to support markets that would other, otherwise not have the opportunity to, uh, to watch live professional basketball. So we're lucky to have them here in Owensboro. Uh, the NAPB contacted Spectra Venue Management about playing in Owensboro and they, as they feel it's a terrific basketball market. So we are excited to have them here. Let me introduce you to Mr. David Magley. I had always heard the folks from Kentucky talk slow, but both these guys were talking now. They, they, they're going to get it. We're, we might slow it down a little bit for me. Um, as, as they said, my name's David Magley, and, and, and I did play for the Cleveland Cavaliers, but just long enough for them to realize they made a gross error in judgment drafting me so high. Uh, I, I, I was fortunate enough to be from South Bend, Indiana. And as a high school kid growing up, my, my, my dream wasn't to play in the NBA, wasn't even to play at Kansas. My, my dream was to one day get to play in a high school gym that seated about three or 4,000 people. And all I wanted to do was get to play in front of my hometown fans. And, and, and when that dream was realized, it was really, really exciting. And then I, I was fortunate enough to go on and get to play Kansas and play all over the world. But the one place that really captured that hometown feel was when I played in the CBA in Albany, New York for Phil Jackson. 3,200 3, fans came out every night for every game. And last year when I was researching the possibilities of, of, of doing this, I came to Owensboro and I, and I, and I, and I watched the game when the Owensboro team played, when the Kentucky Mavericks played, I think the Ohio bootleggers. And you could just see the, 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 the passion of the fans and, and you could just see that the, with the right tweak to the right league, this market could be incredible. The venue's remarkable. Tim and Blake were in, incredible to work with. And, 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 and come up with a strategy that made sense fiscally for our league and for the ownership group to, to, to want to come here. So th that's, you know, kind of the, the, the background of, 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 of what we're trying to do is just create that hometown feel that, that, that used to exist in Indiana and in Kentucky back in the day when there was only no classes in Indiana and only a couple classes in Kentucky and everybody came out every night for the big game at the end of the week and we're hoping we can get that. The NAPB was, was, was born with with, with, with my partner, Dr. Seth Wynick, who's from Chicago and he owns the PBL. Um, and, and we recognized that there was another opportunity. I, I'd, I'd been in Canada for a few years as the commissioner of a really good league called the NBL Canada. In that league, we, have, we, we had a, a one team outdrew any team in North America that wasn't in the NBA. I mean, they, they drew 6,000 fans a game. It can be done. If we do it the right way, it can be done. If we get the right venue, the right community, it can be done. And, in, and in, in the United States, there hasn't been a, a pro A level league. So the, across the world, in, 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 in Germany, there's the BBL, the top league. It'd be like our NBA. And then the second division would be considered pro A, pro B, pro C, pro D. Italy is the same way. China is the same way. South America is the same way. Israel is the same way. But in the US, it's the NBA or, or minor league. And when they start throwing around minor or semi pro, it, it, it gives the feel of cheap. It gives the feel of, uh, is this even, we're going to show up and is there going to be a game tonight? Will the team we play against have the same color uniforms on? Will they have different color shorts? Uh, will the team we play against when we go on the road play in a, play in a rec center? You know, what, what, is, what is it like? Well, 
But let me explain to you how we differentiate ourselves with maybe all the other acronym leagues in the world. We're, we're going to build a league that has standards, strong ownership group, somebody that can afford to be in this business, uh, good venues, good partners with the city government, folks like these guys. Uh, everybody on our teams get paid so that everybody is playing from a level playing field. How you manage that, that, that payroll is up to you, but everybody's going to be paid because this is truly professional basketball. Um, we want to make certain every venue is capable of having TV and live streaming like this wonderful venue is. We want to make certain that our young men are in the schools. We want to make certain that we have strong refereeing. We've, we've, we've hired a guy named Ronnie Nunn, who used to be the head of the NBA Referees Association for 10 years. The director of the NBA will be, be, will, will be the director of, of our league for our referees, giving us the direction we need, which I think is going to give us some of the best refs in the world. But let me go back to the school piece. You know, for us to be impactful, we need to come into this city and we need to do something that is most pro, pro athletes don't do. We need to come into your schools and we need to talk to your kids about bullying. We need to talk to your kids about, about the values of education, the dangers of drugs and alcohol. We need to have games here during the week sometime that are at 11 o'clock in the morning and there's nothing but kids here. And at 9.30, we're going to have an anti-bullying campaign that will come on for an hour and at 10.30, we'll warm up, play the game at 11, and we'll be, they'll be done with their field trip at 1.30, 2 o'clock, back at school to go home and tell their parents about the amazing experience they just had watching basketball and learning about how to treat people the right way. It's important to us that, that we come in and we become part of the community. We, we're, not, we're not coming here to be a fly-by-night team that's here for a few months and then we're out of here. We want to be someone that, that wants to stay here. There's, there's, a, there's a young man that, that came from last year's Mavericks team here, and, he, he's from Chicago, and he played at Memphis, and he said, you know what, I'm staying. I love Owensboro. That's what we want. We want our guys to love, love their markets, come in here and, and become a fiber of their, of, their, of their community. If we do this the right way, and we do this the right way in every community a, a, across the country, we believe that in five years this league could be bigger than the NBA. Now, does that mean bigger as far as guys getting paid more money and we're competing? No, we're not going to compete with the NBA. Heavens, no one will ever compete with them. We can have more teams. We can have more footprints, more geographies, because we can go places they don't want to go. There's a decent likelihood they're never putting an NBA franchise or a G League franchise in Owensboro, Kentucky, Albany, New York, Rochester, New York, Yakima, Washington, Edmonton, Alberta, Seattle, Washington, Las Vegas, Kansas City, Maui, all the different markets that, that we're targeting over the next few years, La Crosse, Wisconsin, Wausau, Wisconsin, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, Appleton, Wisconsin, you just look at the markets that are available. There's no reason why Paducah can't have a team. There's just um, amazing markets across the country that we can do the same thing for. Come, come bring a high level of basketball that, you, that you've never seen before. Very fast, 24, 48-minute games. It looks like the NBA. Guys are up and down the court. Duncan having a lot of fun, competitive. But then be involved in your community and really impact lives. That's why we started this. That's why we're doing this. And we think we're on the front end of something really, really big. Again, we picked this town because we recognize that, that A, we have support from people like this and, and people like this, and that we have an incredible venue that we can be in. And we just think it's a matter of time that, that this venue's packed. That, 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 that the days when you were watching your Kentucky Wesleyan team win national championships and you, and you were standing room only outside, we hope to be able to capture that with our pro guys. Not that Happy's not going to get it done at Kentucky Wesleyan as well. I, he called me today to tell me that he was sorry he couldn't make it. Happy and I have been friends for a long time. He recruited a couple of my players and my sons when he was over at Georgetown College, and I'm a big Happy Osborne fan. There's no question about that. So uh, we'll work in, in conjunction with them as well and make certain that we're, we're building basketball in the game here and in this great town. But just wanted to come out and, and make this announcement. It's historic for us because this is a great venue. You know, anytime you walk through the hallways and see pictures of E.A. Diddle and Nadolf Rupp and people that coached here, being a basketball guy, it kind of gets the goose, pimp, goose, goose bumps going up on the back of my neck and gets me a little bit excited because I know I'm in hollow ground and, and, and I'm with people that are going to love the game and, and just excited to be here. So thank you. We'll start January 1, and, and, and I'll let the, your, your fine mayor come up and, and, and share his thoughts. Thanks, Mr. Magley. And I guess you can tell I probably wasn't a, much of a basketball player. But... You got me ready to play, I believe. <laughs> On behalf of the city of Orangeboro, we have three of our four city commissioners here, Commissioner Conner, Commissioner Vallada, Commissioner Smith-Wright. 
She went to every dad blame Mavericks game they had. She's crazy about basketball. I got a grandson I already told you. He wants to play for you. He's 13. And um, it ought to be a lot of fun. But we are, you'll find out that once we get you here, it's hard for you to leave. Because it's a great community. It's a faith-based community. You got people that work hard, play hard, and they do love their basketball. We've had a Cliff Hagen in here, Rex Chapman, and you know Tommy Watson's here now. And uh, you know, it's a it's a great venue. And 1949 is that right? Who's the historian? 1949 is when this place was built, and it's got a lot of tradition and a lot of history. So we're very happy to have you here, and I have a good luck charm for you. So. This is a commemorative coin of our 200-year birthday. Pam was the only one here when, it was, when we first got there, but uh, wow. this is a... Uh, you so do look good. <laughs> for 200, she's 200. smoking hot. So this is good luck to you and bring all the best for you. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate, Appreciate it. So Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. I know um, Mr. Magley's got a passion that you can tell for basketball, uh, and I know, David, that quite a few of these folks probably have some simple questions about just the logistics of the team. What's the team name going to be? When are they going to start playing? Who are the players? How do you guys select players? And I know we've had these conversations numerous times, but if you'd just share some of those basics about who the coach might be and some, some basic uh, kind of community, kind of the, the nuts and bolts of the team with us. So the, the, excuse me, the, the name of the team will be decided by you. You all will, will, will determine what the name of the team is going to be by going to owensborobasketball.com and voting. Uh, the, the, the name that's picked will get two season tickets to, for, for having their, their, their the, the, you know, being able to choose the name of the team. We're expected to generate a lot of interest in it and see what it is. We want it to be something that's, that resonates Owensboro. I have no idea what that is. I mean, it could be whatever. I, I don't know if you make basically sprockets here and there, they're Owensboro sprockets, but whatever you do, I think it could be unique to here. Um, the season will start January 1 this year. It will run through April with playoffs beginning in May. May, the, the playoffs will be best two out of three series. Uh, the, the, the teams that are in already are, 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 are Seattle, uh, Rochester, New York, a, 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 a team you're familiar with already. Uh, the, the Razor Sharks are in. The Albany Patroons are in, which is a wonderful historic uh, team that once had Phil Jackson coach it and, and, and some pretty good players. I wasn't one of them. Um, I was on there, but wasn't one of the good ones. Uh, and then, and then uh, you, so you mark the fourth team that are in. We expect before the months end to announce another four teams. Um, markets in, in, in Washington State that will be announcing markets in Canada probably more markets in the Midwest that will compete closer to you. Again, ultimately, the first year will be a little spread out, but then, then the goal is to take the offseason and start filling in the gaps. So then we put in, okay, we've got a strong team in Owensboro, let's say a strong team in Kansas City. We really need a team in St. Louis, maybe Springfield, maybe Lawton, Oklahoma, maybe you know, some, some markets like that that have done well with basketball in the past. And again, you, you need only look at NBA, ABA, CBA, D League, now G League, PBL, there's USBL. There's been a lot of good leagues over the year that have had some great markets. We want to we want to pill for all of them. We want them all to be a part of what we do and make it really big. Picking the players will be done by the by the coaching staff and the, and the general manager of that team. Um, but we're hosting tr tryout combines right now all over the country. Uh, I've done four of them so far: Winnipeg, Dallas. Uh, uh, We've been in South Bend, Indiana, and in, and in uh, just recently Raleigh, North Carolina, and we've already found 18 guys out of 100 worthy to play at this level. So it's amazing how many how much talent there is out here to to, to be able to play and and to be in our league. Uh, the name of your coach and general manager will be will be announced probably in the next week. You know we've 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 identified uh, they, he's actually identified it because he's going to be part of the ownership group uh, that he wants to be he wants to be a part of it. He's, he was a, a very successful coach in, in Canada, and, and um, he, but he's from the Midwest. He's from Kansas, so he's he's in good stock, so as they say out there. So he's a he's a good guy, and I think you'll be real happy with with, with that decision as well. What are the, what are the questions do we have? What's your colors going to be? The, the the again that will be determined on the mascot. I mean, if you guys uh, depending on what you want to be, you know, if if you all say red is what works here, if everybody's blue, 
If this is a pretty blue state, we may have to have blue. I don't know. It's, just, it's hard to go against big blue here. I know that. I, I never did much success against those guys anyway. So, um, so yeah, it could be that. A true Jayhawker. Right? Sir. For the league? For the league, we've gotten a couple sponsors so far. We've gotten a, a uniform sponsorship that will call Moneyball, and Moneyball will um, outfit all of our uniforms. All of our teams will be in a similar style, so the font will be the same. The, the location of our logos will be the same. Yeah, again, it's, it's what pro sports do, and the NBA does that. Um, and then we have a ring sponsor, uh, Baron Championship Rings. They'll, they'll have awards for our players. So when our, our individual awards at the end of the year won't be plaques and they won't be trophies. Our guys will get rings. So the MVP will get a ring. The, the person of the year, the guy that does the most community hours will get a ring. The sixth man of the year will get a ring. The newcomer of the year will get a ring. The, the, the rookie of the year will get a ring. And, and if I didn't say defensive player, that, that one as well. So those are the first two sponsors that we have in. Looking at airplane sponsors, looking at, you know, for keep our costs down a little bit. And we're just in the very beginning, we're looking at a sports drink sponsor. A couple of them we're entertaining right now. So there's. There's a lot of opportunity. We, we've just announced this July 5th, so we're, we're moving pretty quick. What else? You can't go to your eye if you do that. Is that where you're going to practice and all that stuff yet? Um, no. Okay. No, we, 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 uh, we're convinced between these guys and their recommendations and talking to Happy out there at the university and everybody else, we'll, we'll figure out the right place to be. And, and wherever the Mavericks played as well, that, that might be the right thing. This is an incredible uh, show today. We appreciate you guys coming out, and, and uh, we'll, we'll all be around to have more conversation afterwards. So, so thank you for your time. Thank you, David. Thank you, Owensboro, for uh, supporting this exciting programming at the uh, Sports Center.